Um, we've spoken a bit this evening about the past of Southlands, about the values which are our foundations. Um, we've spoken about the college today. Um, I said earlier that we were also hoping to be thinking ambitiously about the future. And so I'd like to invite up two very special people, Phil Walker, who is the chair of our university council, the university's governing body, and Shola Olowu, who is the elected student president for Southlands College. Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, Honourable Member, friends. I'm acutely conscious that I'm the only thing standing between you and dessert. <laughs> so I will be brief, but I have the delightful task of making just a couple of points, three points, and then introducing somebody who knows what they're talking about, uh, Shola, who's uh, closer to the excellent issues that Tim articulated at the very beginning of his speech. I want to make three points, if I may. I had a slightly different speech, but I was so inspired by Jennifer's comments, I just want to pick up three of them, if I may, because at the end of Jennifer's speech, I found myself leaning towards my checkbook, and I really had to sort of pull myself in a bit and say, just hang on a minute. But I, I, I'm sure, Jennifer, when I get back to my table, we'll be there. Um, the first point was history, and, and we were reflecting on our table why universities and churches have been intermingled and have been so successful in the Western world and various other parts of the world. And that's because they provide safe places, a place to pause and think and contemplate. And they're part of the fabric of our society. And these are one of the fundamental reasons that they have been so successful, be it Trinity College, Cambridge, or with uh, Mansa Musa's university in Timbuktu. And Fleur Anderson will tell you all about Mansa Musa, if you, uh, who was a Malian king, who will, um, she now knows all about. And that's precisely what he did with his wealth, provide universities and libraries. And they're a place to garner ideas and discuss truths. The second thing that Jennifer said was about choices. The choice to do the right thing. The choice to tell the truth. Many of our students are growing up in a society where leaders who should know better are fairly ambivalent about the truth. And I thought that was quite dangerous. But then I reminded myself that I grew up in an era where one of our leaders in the UK, and our American colleagues will know who this is, said there was no such thing as society. So I did a little bit of research this morning and every anthropologist, every doctor, every academic, every teacher says exactly the opposite. Every, every animal, every manimal in the world gets up in the morning thinking about society. What else is there to do but look after our children and look after our society? So there is such a thing as society. There is such a thing of looking after the students as Tim and our Vice-Chancellor have rightly said. It was President Obama, because I was sitting next to an American colleague, so that's what we were talking about, <laughs> who said we often make assumptions because things are different from 50 years and 100 years ago. We often make assumptions that, you know, the truth will out and justice will happen. He said you've got to be very careful of that. Sometimes, in a climate of untruths, you need to grab the tenets of the beliefs that Tim articulated and bend them towards truth and justice. And that is our job in this room. Last point, and then you're on. You ready? Okay, you want to? No. Just a bit about the future, the transformation fund that Shola is gonna talk about is just so fundamental. We have no choice. And we're not pointing fingers. As I was walking up here, I thought, I'd better have a look in the mirror at the end of Shola's speech and ask, what can I do for Tim's Transformation Fund? What can I do with my network? Uh, and what can I do with my friends and family to make this happen? And I think it's just a personal decision 
rather than me pointing fingers or asking somebody else to do something. I think it starts with my personal belief. Show it. Hello and good evening. My name is Shola K. Alou, also known as Shola. I am Southland's College President, elected leader, and representative of Southland's College student community. It's soon time for me to graduate, and it feels incredibly strange to leave this place I've called home for the past three and a half years. Being a part of Southland's has left a special place in my heart, and I will cherish that time at the University of Roehampton. I originally joined Southland's as a study abroad student three and a half years ago in 2019. <laughs> And my experience was one of the main reasons why I, I moved as a full-time stu um, study abroad student uh, to a full-time student. During my time at this special place, I learned exactly what it meant to be a part of a community, what it meant to be a leader, what tremendous support looks like, what it meant to be an advocate, and the power of hospitality. Southlands is a place where students can get involved in student life, grow and learn, not only as students, but as people. I was fortunate enough to be a part of its rich history and to leave with knowledge, experience, relationships that will last a lifetime. Standing in front of you now, I want to emphasize how crucial access to education is and how important it is for individuals of all backgrounds to have access to education. Southlands was formed to provide education to people of all backgrounds. So, bursaries plays a significant role in supporting students' education as well as providing them with housing, opportunity to further their developments. I've known many domestic and international students for whom bursaries have significant impact on their educational journey. Whether it enables them to attend higher education, dive deeper, to obtain additional skills and qualifications or provide them with peace of mind that they can focus on their studies. Southlands and the University of Roehampton have excitedly developed plans in place to enrich the lives of our community. Our transformation project has the ambition not only to change our structures and spaces at Southlands College, but it has the goal of transforming lives and doing that by raising money, support to reduce and remove financial barriers that prevent many people from accessing university education. In order to, for us to achieve our goals, I would like to ask you to consider supporting Southland's Transformation Fund. Perhaps you might help us by donating to the fund. Perhaps you might introduce us to contacts in your network that might be able to do that. Perhaps you might promote what we do here in other ways to help us make a difference. There are several Southland students in this room today, and I know they will be really pleased to speak to guests and visitors about Southlands and the real difference our community is making here, and for them and for so many other students. Thank you. Thank you both so much. Um, so yes, this evening we're launching our Transformation Fund. Um, the fund has two aspects, um, as Phil and Shola have explained, transforming lives and transforming spaces. Um, we want to make sure that we are bringing down those barriers um, for students to access education through establishing as many bursaries as we possibly can to enable students to study with us. But we also want to break down barriers physically within our college. Um, Behind me here are several boards, and in my hands are two booklets as well, which are available over there on the mantelpiece and back in the Adam room as well, for you to pick up if you'd like to take a look at some of our ambitions through the Transformation Fund, the Transformation Project at Southlands. We want to open up our college um, so that the barriers between our students, between our staff and students are broken down, and also the barriers between our institution our university, our college, and the local community are broken down too. Please do help if you can. Um, there are lots of ways that you might help. One might be scanning a QR code in here and 
giving us lots of money. Um, <laughs> one might be asking the person next to you to do exactly the same. Um, but but I, know, I know the world we live in, and I know that that is impossible for everybody, but perhaps you know other ways that you might help us to raise funds um, to help us achieve the ambitions that we set out um, in this booklet, and those ambitions which we can tell you a bit more about later on this evening if you'd like to speak to about any of us who work at Southlands College. Um, I, forgive me, I can't see where all of you are, but Sunita Narandran is here, um, the Dean of our Faculty of Business and Law, who can tell you all about the project. We have a number of Southlands Methodist trustees with us. Um, do raise your hands if you can, who'd be delighted to talk about the work of the college. Um, we have a vice chancellor, we have uh, a chair of council, many people, um, Eleanor, the director of our development team as well. Um, we're, we're all passionate about what we achieve at Southlands. Um, it's not comfortable to ask people for money. I don't do it very often, um, but I, I do it when it matters, um, and I think it really does. So please, um, whatever your response to this, do take a look at what we're trying to achieve um, and tell people about it. And now I'll let you have your pudding.